system, an online system. So if you're on, on Alice Street and you let us know that you have brush out there, we'll schedule a route. But we're not going to, twice a month, drive every city in town and burn up these trucks and burn up the fuel. We just can't afford to do that anymore. So we're going to go to once a month pickup. That's an example of uh, turn, using the GPS technology as well. We're also uh, strapped again this year for fleet replacement, uh, but we will have $1.7 million set aside for one out of five police cars will be replaced this year. We should be doing 50% half of it. That's just what we can afford. Um, we will be replacing a fire truck. We have a fire truck that uh, twice this year caught on, on fire at an intersection. <laughs> so we decided that that fire truck needs to go out of service, although we did have capable people on board to put out the fires both times. Um, it's kind of, kind of embarrassing. But... Um, you know, this is, this is a case where that truck should have been taken out of service two years ago. But do you, would, would you rather have us continue to drive that truck, even though it's on, on sad legs, or would you rather have a tax increase? I think I know the answer to that. But as long as we can keep it running, as long as it's there when you need it, that's, that's the answer to your question. We are doing just a handful of uh, capital improvements next year in addition to the, the equipment replacement. Uh, Azalea Road. Um, who's familiar with Azalea Road? Everybody ever go to the soccer complex? Yeah, it's between the driving range of Tunnel Road and, and Rec Center. Uh, it's incredible the volume of people that go to the soccer complex. It's actually a now regional draw and they have lights. And if you've not been on Azalea Road, you want to really kind of get your blood pressure going and your adrenaline going, try driving it at 25 miles an hour at night. No, I actually would not recommend that because there are no lights. It's not safe uh, under those conditions. So uh, we have a plan to invest um, storm drainage money. We're going to repair the, the dam that's there, the Craig's Lake Dam, make it functional again. We will not create a standing water lake behind it but we will be able to impede the flow during high flood waters and it will reduce the risk of, of flood damage at Biltmore Village and the fill from that excavation, that uh, dredging work that will be done behind uh, the dam will also provide the fill along Azalea Road so that we can widen the road and put it on, on, safe, on a safe line. So we're real excited about that. We have state money to do that. We have uh, a limited amount of city dollars that we're trying to leverage to get this done from the water fund. Um, there's about $500,000 for parks and recreation, repairs to sidewalks and swing sets and things like that. But um, we're really cutting back in that area. Half of the programming hours and programs and uh, the 10 recreation centers, half of the programming is proposed to be scaled back in the coming year. And that's none, none of the summer programs, none of the after-school um, at-risk youth programs, but they are the programs like at East Asheville Rec Center uh, during the day that people take advantage of um, during the, the, the non-peak hours during the day. So unless there are volunteers to step up, we will not have part-time employees to run those kind of facilities. So our, our schedule is have a public hearing on May 25th. So if you want to see more things done, want to propose additional resources to be put in the budget, you can come on May 25th and propose that. Uh, if you don't like the cuts and you'd rather see something somebody else's program cut, you can come on May 25th and do that as well. Or you can do like most people do and just leave well enough alone. But it's, a, it's an open public hearing. It's televised as well. We now stream council meetings. So if you're really hooked on it, you can get it, get it almost live uh, on, on the Internet. Uh, we've added quite a bit of communication tools here lately. And so, um, but I always like just to have a conversation. So I'm going to open it up for questions, and we can cover whatever you're interested in. I think I'm going to get some help with the microphone. All righty. All right. Now, that was a very exciting budget conversation, wasn't it?
Uh, Gary, as I mentioned to you earlier, I wanted to thank you for being the city manager who for more than 25 years was able to accomplish what no others did, which was to uh, accomplish a uh, sidewalk on Edgewood Road between Merriman Avenue and UNCA. Uh, when I was a student there in the 80s, I know they'd been trying, the university trying to get one. Uh, the neighborhood that I live in was trying to get one 15 years ago, came up with a plan. Uh, it took 15 years, but uh, you know, it, it was great that that is nearly complete with the, the curb and gutter and a safe way for students and neighbors to walk back and forth. And I think the businesses on Merriman Avenue must want to just come, up, come down to the city and kiss you because it's going to help their businesses tremendously for people to be able to safely walk back and forth uh, through that corridor. So thank you. Uh, one thing I hope you will keep in mind uh, with all the pressures that are, that are on you is that the children who attend the city and county schools, who live in neighborhoods and whose uh, low-income working families depend on parks and recreation for opportunities for safe uh, uh, places to be and safe adults to be in community with them and their families and that the city's role in that parks and recreation partnership with education and families is very critical and should be always mindful of keeping that as a priority, even especially in hard budget times where families are stretched even uh, you know, more trying to maintain their own jobs and maybe two or three others to, to make their families budget. So it's still important for the city's budget to include them. So. Right. Let me just comment a couple of things that, that Keith said. One, one of the things I didn't uh, mention, which, which is a key strategy, I, I touched on it with the Azalea Road Project as an example, but um, we are being very opportunistic um, and aggressive in pursuing federal and state grants to do a number of these capital improvements. Um, Azalea is an example. The sidewalks you mentioned are an example. Uh, Kimberly Road is being reconstructed right now. Um, Lexington will be redone. Uh, Cox Avenue will be done, redone with a bike lane as well. Um, we're moving ahead um, with, with a couple of different sidewalk projects. Patton, Patton uh, Road will, will have a sidewalk. So there's, there's, there's opportunities there to take advantage of the, the ARA, the American uh, Recovery Act funds. And um, one of the things that the council is also doing as well is pursuing um, energy, an energy investment fund. Uh, which has gotten quite a bit of interest. And, and this would take um, the energy block grants, which are available under the, the, the uh, federal budget uh, block grant that's come to the city, and then we would turn around and use that le to leverage a pool of funds, like a trust fund that people could borrow from to do anything from weatherization to solar panels. And, and it, they'd have, we'd have to make sure that there's like a five or less than 10 year cost recovery, but this is a, a project that would, we're researching and, and would hope to be the first in the state to move forward in the coming year. But that again is leveraging dollars to do things that people would like us to see done, but we're not, there's not a direct property tax impact in Asheville. Yes, sir. Uh, again, kudos to your police officers for the alleged anarchists running through town. I think that made most of us very angry. The question I've had in my mind is I've seen the coverage on this, since 11 were arrested and there were about 30 involved, is that going to lead to additional arrests? Maybe something like waterboarding or something? <laughs> that, that was a joke. <laughs> I, I'm sure the latest investigative and um, interrogation techniques will be used. But the, uh, the, the reality is actually that... Um, you know, whenever you have a situation like that, um, you, you have the people who are actually performing the crimes and the police chief's been pursuing felonies for those folks. Uh, and then there are other folks who are misguided young people who really are in the wrong place at the, at the wrong time. They need to be taught a lesson, but they don't necessarily aren't, aren't, aren't the main perpetrators. The interesting thing, which I, I was quite, it's an ongoing investigation, I probably shouldn't say much more. But there is a link back to a website, and there are folks who justify uh, peaceful anarchy and um, would say that this got out of hand. I, I think the explanations are 
damn week, uh, if you ask me. Uh, I don't 